Gabe Berkich kicking it off for OU. This will be a touchback, and Kansas will start on its 25-yard line. They're going to run Puka Williams on first down, and he is dragged down to the backfield for a loss of a couple. John Michael Terry with the stop for a loss. Carter last week against TCU really struggled to get in any sort of rhythm. TCU opted to be very aggressive defensively, tried to get up in the faces of those wide receivers, and they just couldn't get a whole lot going. It was by far their worst offensive output of the season, trying to get back on track today against what is a very improved Oklahoma defense. Williams able to break a tackle in the backfield got back to the line of scrimmage but a vicious tackle by Deshaun White and Kenneth Murray bringing up third down and long. Hey Greg there's that effort you know referencing in the open in relationship to this football team just flying around. Alex Grinch you know he says listen I can take a lot of fire as a defensive coordinator here but I will not be affiliated with a team that doesn't play hard and by the way we're seeing something right now guys it's currently on the endangered species list it's called an offensive huddle. <laughs> <laughs> and if you watch Kansas, they'll mix tempos, but this is a situation in third and long against that talented secondary from Oklahoma they have to stay out of because of some of the trouble they've had up front protecting Carter Stanley. Oklahoma opponents with one third down conversion all year and third down and long, and there was contact and a late flag is thrown. Charlotte got tangled up with Parnell Motley. Defensively. Pass interference. Defense, number 11. First down, spot of the foul. Now that has been an issue not just defensively, overall, 129th in the country in penalty yards per game. Maybe one of the reasons why Lincoln was telling the guys before the game, hey, focus, we're, we're playing a team that everybody's telling us we should beat by 100. And he's been able to use the penalties even when they've had a lot of success early on here as a way to keep the pedal on the guys about, hey, we're not a, a, a completed team yet. We're not a finished product. Got to be more disciplined. Here's a swing pass behind Puka Williams, and he gets up to about the 41 before he's squashed by Murray. And Puka Williams is very active in space. When you think about Les Miles in his time at LSU, you think big backs, you think physical guys. Well, at 5'10", 170, I'm not sure many people would describe Puka Williams as being an every down workhorse between the tackles, but he has taken to this offense nicely. And in the departure, of Khalil Herbert, who left the team prior to last week's game against TCU. Luke Williams is going to have to step into becoming that bell cow back for Les Miles' offense. Big 12 freshman of the year last year. Williams, he gets the pitch here, and that looks like, uh, as that play is made defensively by Perkins, a lot like the play we saw Les Miles run at LSU with that pitch back to the running back. So Herbert announcing that he's not going to play anymore at Kansas, didn't play against TCU last week, and he, he was off to a really good start, had that great game against BC when they throttled the Eagles on the road. 48 points in that game. We had a great conversation with Les yesterday. You can just tell how happy he is to be back. Two of his sons are on the roster that he gets to coach here. Third nine, though, for his team. They converted third and long earlier. Stanley, not sure where that was going. It was way behind the receiver, fourth down, and so they Greg, there's, the that, there's that streakiness that, yeah. that we talk about with, with Carter Stanley. He can throw it, but he can't be a yo-yo player. He can't be an up-and-down player for them to sustain success on offense. Yeah, I think he locked in on that receiver, too, because there was a receiver underneath and Steven Robinson that was open. Now it was underneath the sticks, and he would have had to make some nice yards after catch to convert, but he's got to go through his progressions regardless of down and distance. Kyle Thompson punting this one to C.D. Lamb, and it went out of bounds around the 25-yard line. So we'll get our first look today at Jalen Hurts, the Oklahoma quarterback, when we come back to Lawrence. The national title game, as you know, a couple years ago got pulled in that game, then was benched for Tua Tonga-Vailoa, but when Tua got hurt, he led Bama to a win in the SEC championship game. 
Oklahoma runs Trey Sermon here, and he stood up. No gain on the play. Hertz is from just outside of Houston. Played for his father in high school. As we talked about, had a great resume at Alabama. 26-2 record as a starter. Went to the college football playoff three times. Then this past December, he walked at Alabama's winter graduation, got his bachelor degree in public relations in an era where everybody seems to, when they face adversity, look to get out of Dodge and go to another school as Hertz throws a deep ball for Lamb. Almost caught one-handed incomplete. Just to finish my point, as the flag's down, Jalen Hurts decided to stick it out in Alabama. And it worked out well for him getting this opportunity here with the Sooners. And he refined his craft. He was a better player, even though he didn't start last year. He played a lot and came out the other side having been a much more polished passer and a better overall quarterback. Named a captain, which that's hard to do when... Pass interference, offense, number two, 15-yard penalty, still second down. So that's C.D. Lamb. When you watch this separation that C.D. Lamb creates, you see that push-off with his right arm onto the shoulder of Hassan defense. If that push-off is down around the waist, the official won't see it. But since it was up near the shoulder pads, it's a little easier for that side judge to find it. So you've got a pass interference on the defense for Oklahoma. Now a pass interference on the offense. And look at the impact on field position that it's having. And they're backed up inside their 15-yard line. Oklahoma gets into a lot of third and longs. There's a ton of them. But for whatever reason, they still convert them. It's amazing, especially last week. I believe it was a third and 17 backed up in a similar spot on the field, and they hit a big post for a huge gain. Down in distance for this offense is never insurmountable. Has elected to decline the offensive pass interference. It will be third down. I guess uh, Les Miles is saying, you know what, I I'd rather make it come down to one down on third and 10 than giving Oklahoma second and 23 to your point, Greg, about uh, how easy it is for them to pick up a second down in 2023 compared to most colleges. No doubt. This is a team that averages over 10 yards of, of play. So it's understandable they would decline it and opt to play third down. to throw here for Hertz. Receiver comes open, and it's caught for a first down at the 39-yard line by true freshman Jaden Hazelwood. And a great job by the Oklahoma offensive line here. Jalen Hurts has all day. Pressure picked up with ease. Jalen has a nice little slide, a couple hitches, and finds Hazelwood, the freshman, working across the field. It's a great catch, good strong catch, good separation by the talented freshman. Braden, Norman, watch the pick So up. Les Miles' gamble does not pay off. Fresh set of downs for Oklahoma on its 40-yard line. Hurts able to elude a defender. And finally dragged down. Got a yard or two on the play. Jalen Hurts, 12 touchdown passes, five rushing touchdowns as the top pass efficiency rating in all of college football. Leads all quarterbacks in rushing yards, averaging over 100 per game. Yeah, and you look at the numbers, and they're eye-popping. They always are for an Oklahoma quarterback. But I do think that Oklahoma's best test still lie in front. So Jalen's going to have to continue to improve, but he's off to a terrific start here after one month of the season. Yeah, they got the Longhorns next week. Still have to go to Kansas State and Baylor and Oklahoma State. Hurts in trouble, and he's going to lose yardage here. So Kansas, for the second time early on, has Oklahoma in third and ten. That's Bryce Tornadin who made the hit for the Jayhawks. And Greg, as eye-popping as the numbers have been, it's been the offensive line that is concerning. It's been an area that Lincoln Riley knows has to improve, and they got to become more physical. And right there on that play, they were not a physical unit up front. But again, the average over 10 yards of play. A little pressure here from Kansas. Hurts in trouble being chased. Gets rid of the pass. 
pass. It's tipped and nearly intercepted. A defensive lineman, Cody Cole, had his hands on the ball, couldn't pull it down. Kyron Johnson had pressure on Hertz. Yeah, and you're going to see number 19, Gavin Potter, on the left side of the screen. See the spin move working against Tyrese Robinson. And a good job, too, by Kyron Johnson, number 15, rallying. They clearly, they're not going to let Jalen Hurts' legs beat them. That's for sure. At least that's what you believe from D.J. Elliott, their defensive coordinator. That's the ninth punt only all year by Oklahoma. It takes several Sooner bounces and rolls all the way down to the two-yard line. No score early on in Lawrence. 58-yard punt. That's a movement on the offensive line. By the way, of, of those seven allegations, there are two against football considered less severe than basketball. They were under the former regime, not with Les Miles at the helm. Kevin Fader, uh, the right tackle, was the one that moved. You're in danger here of a safety. Your tailback lined up six yards deep in the end zone. More movement, this by the left guard, Malik Clark. You can't back him up much further. <laughs> I'm standing right behind the offense, offense. guys. Offense, number 61, half the distance to the goal, still first down. And, and I'm watching Carter Stanley, and he's in the huddle, yes, a huddle, and he's talking to them about listening. Listen, yeah. listen to the count, because what Kansas is trying to do, Greg, is get five extra yards to get out of a hole, yeah. and now they've backed up six inches. When you're backed up, no, no matter what, hard two every time. Yeah. Because you can steal five, potentially. Yeah. They pitch it, and good run by Puka. Williams gets more than five. He gets about seven yards. Again, there's that pitch we're used to seeing with Les Miles' offenses at LSU as Kenneth Murray is slow to get up. That would be huge for them. He is the heart and soul of that defense. Two-time captain, their leading tackler. That would be a big loss. The linebackers, big reason why I think a lot of people are very optimistic about the improvements Oklahoma's made on that side of the football. Kenneth Murray and Deshaun White really stepped up their game this year, so could be a huge loss for the Sooners if he's unable to come back and have an impact on this game. Puka Williams against Oklahoma last year had over 200 rushing yards, a couple of touchdowns on the ground, and a passing touchdown. So he's a weapon at tailback for KU. Second down and four. Williams again makes the first guy miss. Bounces off tacklers. Great run by Williams across the 30-yard line. A great job initially making the first guy miss. And right in the backfield, there's an Oklahoma Sooner defender, and Brian Mead shakes him no problem. Then you see the acceleration. 170 pounds, not the most powerful runner, but very quick, and he reaches top speed so quickly. Span of just five or six yards already at top speed. Puka Williams showcasing what made him an all Big 12 performer last year. There's the numbers we talked about in the game against the Sooners last year. That was a 24-yard run on the last play. Now Stanley to throw. Open receiver in the middle of the field. It's a first down catch by Stephon Robinson. It's the second window slant. Trying to work that RPO. He doesn't like it initially. He negotiates the defender Mead and throws the slant right in behind him. Throw was just a little bit off target, but a good job by Robinson twisting his shoulders just a little bit to reel it in. It's a good drive so far from Kansas being able to flip field position and creating some momentum offensively. Keep in mind they've lost 14 consecutive games to Oklahoma, have not defeated the Sooners since 1997. Here's Williams again, run down. 
as it was Turner Yell who went low on Williams and made the stop for no gain. If you look at this Kansas offense, I know the numbers don't necessarily lead to you thinking this is an improved group, but if you watch them, they actually are better. And the best example was against Boston College, where they went on the road and won for the first time, and as long as I can remember, against a Power 5 team. And the offense was excellent, very efficient, threw the ball with great great efficiency, and, and ran the ball very well, as well as you see Les Keening the offensive coordinator for the Jayhawks. And you also saw Puka Williams on the sideline got banged up on that last play. So the backup is in Dom Williams. Only his 18th carry. The ball carrier is number 18. Now check that that was Velton Gardner, true freshman, only his fifth carry of the year. And he gets good yardage to put Kansas in third and manageable as they continue to look at Puka Williams on the Kansas sideline. Well, they're looking at Puka on the Kansas sideline. I'm on the Oklahoma sideline. They've got Kenneth Murray in the tent. Looks like they're looking at a lower left leg uh, injury that they're examining on him right now. And you see Puka Williams trying to work out that right shoulder. Some pain on his face, though, clearly dealing with something. Oklahoma bringing some pressure, and the catch is made, and it's a first down. James Sosinski, the tight end. This is doing two things, guys. First of all, it's installing confidence in Carter Stanley and the Kansas Jayhawks, but it's also keeping that potent Oklahoma offense on the sideline. This is a great job, too, by Carter Stanley, recognizing that there was pressure coming from his left, and as a result of that pressure, you see Buki Radley Hiles, number 44, retracing in man coverage after the cross ball motion. Really nice throw into the pressure. So many quarterbacks, they see that pressure and they want to throw away from it. No, throw at the pressure because they just vacated area. It's a good job finding the receiver in space. That's Brian Mead who's in there for the injured Kenneth Murray. Puka Williams is back in the game. They fake it to him. Stanley setting up and now makes a long throw. And the catch is made at the 25. Robinson got it. The Jayhawks with a drive that started from about the half yard line or all the way to the 25 of OU. A great job by Stanley. Negotiating the pressure up front, climbing in the pocket. An excellent job by Robinson on the scramble drill, coming back to his quarterback. We mentioned before, when Carter Stanley gets going and he hits a throw or two, and that confidence starts to build, he gets better and better and better on display here after what was a nice couple throws. Here's Puka Williams, who is lined up at receiver that time, came in motion, and that's a pass play. It's a gain of about three. And Kenneth Murray checks back into the game for Oklahoma, so that's a good sign for the Sooner defense. You know, Greg, when you look at Puka Williams and you referenced his size, and, and Les Miles talks about getting him the football more, that doesn't necessarily have to mean out of the backfield. You want to get him the ball in space so you can limit the contact and, and give him opportunities to make people miss and create explosive plays. And one-on-one, -on -one, he is so tough to bring down. He can really wiggle. So being creative with how you get him his touches is something this Kansas Jayhawk team is going to have to continue to work on. Stanley taking a shot. Oh, what a throw. It was on target to Charlotte. It's a touchdown for KU. That ball to allow Charlotte to catch it other than where he put it. Beautiful throw. Carter Stanley went 5 for 5 for 63 yard scoring drive, but when you consider back to back false start penalties, the Jayhawks started that drive on their half yard line. Sooners elect to return this Trey Brown. And he's up to the 23. Let's go to the studio and check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Also, the first points Oklahoma's given up in the first quarter this season. This is only the sixth play the Sooners have run. Trey Sermon able to break that ankle tackle and lunge forward for a couple of extra yards. Kyle Mayberry had him wrapped up. And the big plan when you're trying to play against this Oklahoma offense, just make them play offense. Don't give up the 40, the 50-yard plays. They seem to make at least three or four 40-yard plays every week, it feels. Make them play offense, tackle in space, and don't give up the explosives. 
There's a swing pass to Stevenson. Nice cut, and Stevenson has the first down. Oklahoma leads the country in scoring. Total offense, yards per play, yards per rush. They've had 48 or more points in every game this year. 14 consecutive games with 34 or more points going back to Kyler Murray and company a year ago. Here's Sermon, and he's able to outrun the defender into Kansas territory. They finally catch him inside the 40-yard line. Rice Tornado just did not have enough speed there. 22-yard run on the play by Sermon. They just make you defend so many different things. I mean, the stats are off the charts, but you have to worry about two pullers in their run game and play action and run after catch with their explosive wide receivers. And quarterback run, of course, with Jalen Hurts' legs. Hurts in trouble, spins away, being chased by two Jayhawks, and the pass thrown out of bounds, intended for Basquin. Kansas has been able to get some pressure on Jalen Hurts a few times. That was Darius Moraney. You know, Greg, those, those broken plays right there, those are the plays with this Oklahoma offense that often result in the big explosive play downfield. And really well done, to your point, Dave, by Kansas. When, when a guy gets out of the pocket, you start to lose your guy, right? Kansas did a really good job keeping eyes on targets. You see the defensive coordinator for Kansas, DJ Elliott, formerly of Colorado and Kentucky. Trying to get those guys to play extremely hard in this new 3-4 scheme. Another pass play. Hurts setting up wide open in the middle of the field. The catch is made inside the 20-yard line. This will be a first down by Oklahoma as Braden Willis gets just his second catch of the year. It's a pretty interesting route. You're going to see him come out and create just a little bit of outside move to create a little more width by the defender and wrap right around for an easy completion. That's a great route. And a nice throw by Jalen Hurts. Got an injured Jayhawk on the field. Oklahoma down 7 nothing, and not given up a point in the first quarter. It scored 55 in four games. They are in the red zone with a minute 43 to go in the opening frame. Play action pass. Hurts with time to the end zone. And a flag is thrown. Jeremiah Hall. Pass interference. Defense. Number 15. 15 yard penalty and an automatic. First down. What do you think of the call? I agree with it. Because if Kyron Johnson turns around and tries to make a play on the football, the official probably keeps that flag in his pocket. But because he cuts off Jeremiah Hall from reaching where the football is about to land, and he doesn't really make any effort to try to intercept it, gonna get that call. That was a good design, too. Trying to get Hall on the wheel route off play action. It's tough to defend for a linebacker, and unfortunately for Les Miles, Sooners have first and goal. Sermon gets the carry, and he is into the end zone for the Oklahoma touchdown. Four rushing touchdowns on the year for Sermon. It's a great answer by this Oklahoma offense. First time trailing all year. Boom, right down the field. Clockwork in rhythm, both running and throwing the football. The next thing you know, we're within an extra point away from having a tie ball game. And Burkich nails it. We're even at seven late in the first quarter in Lawrence. in trouble. Hog tied at the 20-yard line. Boys and had a great conversation with Les yesterday for a good half hour. A pump fake, Stanley's pass in traffic, nearly intercepted by Murray. You know, think about Kansas as you look at the connections with 
the two sons and all the uh, athletes in the Miles family. It's amazing. We, we asked him, hey, you know, what did the team do under Mark Mangino in 2007 to get to 12-1 and one and go to the Orange Bowl? And he basically listed everything that Kansas did then and said, that's exactly our blueprint. Right. Because it's been done before here, and we think that we can win. Gardner loses yardage. Going to be third and long. And I do think that they've done a great job of creating a family atmosphere. I mean, you see the Miles family looking on. The kids are constantly in the building, and that creates a real culture that Les Miles is trying to really invigorate. Obviously, Kansas, very well known for basketball. He thinks the basketball program can benefit them on the recruiting trail. So they're pressing all the right buttons as you look on at Ben Miles, the fullback, Les Miles' son, lined up right, Carter Stanley. And Stanley's pass is caught. Parchman is their leading receiver, 29th catch of the year. It's going to be a first down. How about that? They've converted on third and long now. Twice. That's just a nice route to really threaten the defender over the top. They take that curl route all the way to 15 yards. And usually when you get to 15, you're thinking that guy's probably going to go. Instead, he throttles down. And Stanley hits him on a very nice throw for the third down conversion. So the game is tied at seven after one in Kansas. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The last time they won a game against a top ten team was the Orange Bowl. Five Virginia Tech. Stanley's going to get sacked here with Ronnie Perkins getting him in the backfield for a loss of about six. And Ronnie Perkins, nice job sliding inside on this pass rush. You're going to watch him. He's just going to work to the inside and find some opportunities. And he just blows up Puka Williams, who's trying to save a life. That is not an advantageous matchup. Got to save his own. Yeah, it's not an advantageous matchup to have a defensive end that specializes rushing the pass or working against your 170-pound running back. But... It's a great rush, good inside move there by Perkins. Second sack of the year for Perkins. Here's Puka Williams getting the pitch, finding a little bit of running room. Going to be third and long. They've already converted on third and six, third and ten, and they also had another third and long that they converted via Oklahoma penalty. Stanley's done a good job so far being accurate with the football. Especially on those throws that are a little more challenging. And downfield. You also have to give credit, too, on some of these third down opportunities. This offensive line has done a pretty good job of giving those receivers time to create some separation. They're just going to hand it off on third and 12. And look at this. Puka Williams on a first down and more. First down, Kansas. Number one. All the way. Into Kansas territory, a 22 yard run. Yeah, just split belly action. You see the fullback and the running back crossing. This is a play that Oklahoma runs with unbelievable efficiency. They like their numbers there to the right side, and Puka Williams finds a crease. This Oklahoma defense had been so good on third down throughout the first few games of the season, but today having a tough time getting off the field. Texas Tech was 1 of 14 last week on third down against Oklahoma's defense. Only a one-yard run that time, if that, for Puka Williams. And, and this is the recipe to have a shot, right? To have any shot whatsoever is chew up some clock, convert third downs, keep Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma offense on the sideline. And the best defense is your offense. If you think about Oklahoma, there's not many times in the last couple years where they've been on the ropes. The best example of a team that can't match up with them from a talent standpoint was Army last year. And you look at the time of possession in that game, Army had almost three to one in, in regards to time of possession. So it's been a good job so far in the first 18 minutes of this game of Kansas trying to eat up that clock. Williams wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Kenneth Murray on the hit for Oklahoma. So another third down and long. 
Craig, it'll be interesting, too, to see if Oklahoma continues to play with a light box. I think they feel like with five in the box, they can still stop the run versus Kansas. That shift in philosophy may have to change here, which could open up the passing game a little bit for Kansas here on third down. Especially with that last conversion. I mean, showing that you're willing on third and 12 to run the football, that can open up a lot of things. But in this particular case, I'm looking the direction of Andrew Parchment, their excellent number one receiver. But they're going to run it. Williams got good yardage and no one less miles. He'll probably go for it on fourth down and three. I would. I mean, knowing that your defense is going to have a tough time stopping this group all day anyways, whether they have the short field or you pin them deep. So I would absolutely go for it in this setting. Knowing that your offense has some rhythm, you're confident running the football, and your quarterback so far has been very accurate. They haven't converted yet on fourth down. Wouldn't this be timely to get their first fourth down conversion? Need about two and a half yards. Stanley will throw, and it's dropped. Sosinski couldn't hang on. Had he caught it, it was still going to be close because there were two defenders on him. But he put it on the ground, it's for, and uh, Oklahoma takes over on down. Oklahoma takes over on downs. Jalen Hurts with a pump fake. And throws almost an interception, which for sure Mike Lee was going to take back to the house for a touchdown. So a drop on fourth down by the tight end, and now a drop by a safety. It would have been six. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jalen Hurts just late to the outlet, tried to dial up a shot play after the fourth down stand, and Lee was all over it. Oh, you see that cast on the right hand of Lee. Maybe that had an impact on whether or not he could reel in that football. Hurts to throw again, and it's a first down catch by C.D. Lamb into Kansas territory. So good bounce back by Hurts after nearly throwing a pick. That was a dart to Lamb. Yeah, that RPO game hitting these receivers on slants, so tough to defend. Hurts again, another throw on target. Lee Morris with a catch, big hit by Mike Lee, but the Sooners now are inside the 25. And the pace of play right now, Kansas has got to get lined up. That's two plays in a row where Kansas is still standing, looking for the call at some, with some of the positions while Oklahoma's snapping the ball. See the numbers for Hurts so far, five of nine passing. And a throw again off play action. Here comes a flag. And Hurts, who gets hit hard along the side of Mike Lee. Oh, another flag, though. Holding, Holding. Offense, offense number 70 at the 10-yard penalty. After the play, personal foul, late hit out of bounds. Defense, number 11, 15 yards and an automatic first down. All right, let's see. So Bray Walker committed the holding violation. He's making his second start. He's a redshirt freshman. But let's see the hit by Mike Lee. I mean, it looked really close. Oh, come on. I mean, I, I don't agree with that. That's, I mean, that's a terrible call. That's a terrible call. It's not like Jalen's completely out of bounds. Now, he wasn't Mike, out of bounds at all. Not, not even at all. But Jay, I will say this. Mike Lee's got to be smart about launching and lowering his head, which is exactly what he did. Fortunate because if he actually hits with the crown of his helmet, that could have very easily been called a targeting. He didn't. But I just surprised that the call was late hit out of bounds. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Just the mistakes you just can't make defensively, giving Oklahoma additional life. I mean, we've seen three mistakes here in the last minute. A drop on fourth down, a missed pick six, then that penalty, and the Sooners going to work. Trey Sermon high up in the air. Hurdles a defender down to about the 13-yard line. McCullough, who was injured earlier, was in on the stop for Kansas. Oklahoma has some one-on-ones. 
outside. Kansas offs to pressure. But this look looks like he might be getting pressure from the top. There it comes. Quarterback run for Hurts inside the 10. Hurts drags a defender. And they blow it down at the two-yard line. It'll be first and goal for the Sooners. A 12-yard run by Jalen Hurts. Edge pressure off the left from Kansas. And a quarterback draw. Jalen Hurts is such a strong runner. Not as fast or as quick as Kyler was. But at initial contact, he's so difficult to bring down. He's a state champion in the state of Texas in high school and weightlifting. He is a powerful man. He drags the defender after the nice run. Perfect call versus the pressure, too. Yeah, beautiful with all that middle of the field vacated. Sermon gets the carry, looking for a second touchdown of the opening half, but he won't get in. Johnson, McCullough, both there for KU. So it is second in goal. On these, this is where Jalen Hurts' legs become very dangerous. Second and fake inside and get him on the perimeter, give him a run pass option. If he wants to carry it, he can. Don't be shocked here. They go with a little play action and get him moving a little bit. But Sermon leaving the pocket, Hurts keeping it himself. And Hurts is in. Touchdown. Oklahoma has the lead. That's the sixth rushing touchdown for Jalen Hurts already this year. His quarterback power. He drives and drives, and you see the nose of the football clearly crosses the plane. It's a powerful run from Jalen Hurts. So 18 touchdowns accounted for through four plus games for Jalen Hurts. And the extra point, there's a flag down after the made kick by Burkich. It appears it will be Either declined or, or used on the kickoff. Personal foul, ends in the face, defense number 97. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Time out. It hurts, though, off to an outstanding start. His numbers very comparable to those of Murray and Mayfield through the first five games. You have to think, too, that Jalen's only going to get better. And he's going to have more and more opportunities to showcase his abilities and his improvement against the some of the better competition they're going to play down the stretch. Here's Horn having to pick it up on one hop. And because of that penalty, as there's a flag down here, because of that penalty for hands to the face by Kansas on the extra point, that was kind of doomed from the get-go on the kickoff. Rajon Bridges, who's been playing offense, defense, and special teams, was the guy that made the tackle. During the return, holding, return team number 16, half the distance to the goal, first down. Right. So Kansas backed up inside its 10, but Puka Williams finds some running room. Look at him go past the 40 yard line. Trey Brown finally gets him at the 45, but that's 36 yards downfield. Look at the hesitation. Puka just hesitates, boom, foot in the ground and gone. That's track speed. And I love, too, how he brings both hands into his chest to cover up the football. So many times breaking away, you see a guy chase down, create a fumble. Puka Williams. Already at the century mark for the Kansas Jayhawks, really showcasing that speed on the pitch power out of the back door. Boy, maybe we spoke too soon at the top of the telecast when we were saying the difference in Oklahoma this year compared to the last two is the defense. Williams again, and this time they grab him at the line of scrimmage for no gain. Let's check in with Cassidy. All right, Cassidy here, it's 14-7. Oklahoma leading for the first time. They trailed Kansas 7-0. 
early in the ball game, the first time the Sooners had trailed it all. This game was delayed about 30 minutes because of lightning in the area. Kansas face now with a second and 10. Puka Williams to the left side and doesn't get much. Overton and Nick Benito, a redshirt freshman from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, on the takedown. Third down and long, which shockingly has not been an issue at all for Kansas. You know, Greg, we talked about the defense, and obviously they've given up some big runs here, but you look at that effort right there. That's what we talked about. Nick Benito, 35. He chases that play down from the opposite side of the field, and that's exactly what Alex Grinch has to have as he builds this defense. Yeah, the defensive coordinator saying, I don't really care that much about execution yet. Really a lot more focused on guys playing as hard as humanly possible. They've done that through the first few games. Stanley to throw here on third down and long into traffic, broken up and incomplete. No flag. Sosinski, the intended receiver. Pat Fields, a first year starter at free safety with good coverage. Yeah, this is Velcro. As Sosinski just tries to work on a little out route, some contact between him and Fields. But I think it's a good no call. Big body tight end working against the safety. Can certainly understand why Carter Stanley, the quarterback, wanted the pass interference, but it was a bang bang play, and I'm okay with the official keeping their flag in their pocket. Kyle Thompson has punted three times as often as Oklahoma punters this year. Hangs that one high in the air for C.D. Lamb, and it's fair caught around the seven yard. Now trying to get the Sooners into the college football playoff for the third straight year. Here's Trey Sermon getting the carry, getting spun down by Kamara after a gain of about two. I mean, I think a lot of people, the big conversation was, well, you know, Jalen's just not progressing. Jalen's not getting better. Jalen's all these other. Jalen's great. He always was. He just wasn't as efficient as a thrower as Tua was last year. So they had a long, drawn-out competition. Jalen improved in the process, and, and clearly you're seeing that improvement on display here for the Oklahoma Sooners. Hurts to throw here on second down. Seven, everybody covered. Now a receiver comes open. It's caught at the 35 for a first down by Basquin. Greg, obviously you were a quarterback at Alabama. I mean, how difficult must it have been for Jalen Hurts to come back on campus? Yeah, you won a national championship as a team, but you were the guy and you got benched. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. And I think everyone, even Texas Longhorns and Oklahoma State Cowboy fans, probably have a little bit of a soft spot in their heart for Jalen Hurts, knowing that he stuck with it, put his head down, he worked at his craft and now has come out the other side a tougher better more well-rounded quarterback play action here for Hertz and a beautiful throw for a first down to Jeremiah Hall a gain of 16 and they're in Kansas territory again and a beautiful design here play action you just allow Hall to just kind of sneak out from the end of the line of scrimmage and a nice in rhythm throw by Jalen Hertz Hertz rolling out here and another wide open receiver. This is Willis, who's in a rhythm now. He picks up 17 more yards through the air. And everyone looks at this offense. Like it's so complicated. They've run that play three times already. It's, yeah. it's not that complicated. It just stresses you in so many different ways. They stretch you horizontally. They can stretch you vertically with their speed. They're really good with the quarterback run. They have excellent running backs. and. They're really tough after the catch. I mean, it's just really, really difficult to defend this offense, but it's not overly complicated. Sermon, and they have not been able to run the ball very well on first down against this Kansas front. Cody Cole with the tackle for the Jayhawks, a pickup of two as we near the three-minute mark here in the first half. And I think that that's an area that Lincoln Riley wants to improve upon with the offensive line. He, he needs them to be more effective in execution on early downs to avoid what have been a successful third-down conversion, but you don't want to have those. Sermon again, and now a reverse. Basquin throwing it back to Hurts. Hurts makes the defender miss and takes it all the way inside the 10 yard line. Anytime you see that quarterback just kind of looking as though he's going about his business, you got to be aware 
of the throwback, Basquin making a nice throw to Jalen Hurts. And how about the run after catch? Almost had the ball jarred loose there. Good job getting up field. And just another wrinkle that you have to account for in this Oklahoma offense. They've got the Longhorns next week in Dallas. First and goal from the seven. And Hurts going to run it to the right, trying to get the corner, but he's cut down at about the four-yard line by Davon Ferguson. Penalty marker is thrown at the line of scrimmage, actually a little bit behind the line. During the run, holding offense, number 52, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Third penalty by Oklahoma. Kansas has committed six in the first half. That was Tyrese Robinson. And you're going to see him slide to his left a little bit and almost lose that contain, but you see him grab. He, he grabs that right shoulder pad right there. You can see it right there in the middle of the offensive line. It's a good call by the official. Holding penalty by Oklahoma. First and goal on the 17. Hurts in trouble, and he goes down. A flag as well. Another negative play. Azur Kamara, three and a half sacks now in the year at this stance. And a loss of 11. I assume they just want to check with Les Miles, let him know where the spot is to see if he wants to accept Holding. the penalty, which Offense, I assume he number 52, would not. He would decline it. Decline. Yep. Second down. You know, you got second and goal from about the 25-yard line, so ended up being a loss of eight on the play. Oklahoma does a really good job of creating opportunities for Jalen Hurts' legs. In that last play, they try to get a guy running across. The offensive line unable to hold up on the edges. So far, Tyrese Robinson playing right tackle in place of Adrian Ely, who's banged up. He's had a little bit of a tough time keeping his hands inside, called for holding on consecutive plays. Ely started the first three games at right tackle. They're going to give it to Sermon. There comes another reverse, and C.D. Lamb in trouble. He pitches it at the last second to Hurts, and Hurts is tackled back near midfield. It was first and goal. Now it's going to be third and goal from the 50. This is wild. Trying to go with the reverse. Pitch it back to Jalen Hurts to throw it. But they did not fool Kamara as he was all over it. Grabbing C.D. Lamb and making a bad play worse. Wow. It'll be third and 50 when we come back to the range. Hurts looking. And got a receiver wide open. Now they're back in field goal range with Grant Calcaterra making his first catch. And you see some pushing and shoving. The, the helmet of Stephen McKenzie is off. Boy, you got the offense off the field if you're Kansas. Don't do anything dumb. I mean, yeah, it's a field goal opportunity, but wait, now they're taking the ball and they're taking it all the way back to midfield. Question is, are there two flags? Because that, look, that flag that we saw was late. I've never seen third and goal from the 50. I've definitely never seen third and goal from your own 35. I've seen it one time <laughs> where I've seen a team punt on fourth and goal. I've seen it once. From where, though? Probably about the 50. It was Michigan State in 2010 against Alabama in the Capital One Bowl at the time. I remember it vividly. Kirk Cousins was the quarterback. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike, offense number 54. That is his first of the game. It's a 15 yard penalty that will be enforced from the end of the play. It will be fourth down. So now they got to go to the end of the play, which was the 30 yard line, and back it up 15 yards. It was on Marquise Hayes, the left guard. You see him on top of Najee Stevens McKenzie, and a pretty easy call for the official. Yeah, very clear. The center judge all over it, the official all over it. 
a good job. So for the first time since 2010, Michigan State, Alabama, <laughs> as far as we know, we'll get the research on it, but we got a punt on fourth and goal. And to think that Oklahoma, of all teams, with their potent offense is the one that's in this situation is pretty surprising. This is interesting. There's nobody back deep for Kansas. Oklahoma's going to down this around the two-yard line. Get a safety here, and they just run the quarterback, making sure they give the offense some breathing room. And Kansas has all of its timeouts, so Lincoln Riley will use one here. Coming up, State Farm Halftime Report. Kevin Agandi, Jonathan Vilma, Mark Sanchez. Texas Tech, which got throttled last week by Oklahoma, playing well against Oklahoma State. Get you updated on Iowa, Michigan, and Texas trying to get revenge at West Virginia. You, you, you guys both thought Iowa was going to win, right? I did. Yeah. I thought, I thought Iowa would win. I know they're down right now. I don't know what the score is, but it appears as though Michigan has come out of the gates and, and played much better than what we saw a couple weeks ago against Wisconsin. And a tough place, too. Yeah. I'm pretty impressed with Iowa, too. I think Iowa is excellent. I know they turned it over early, and it doesn't sound as though they've been able to get much going offensively. So second down and six. Just outside the five-yard line for Kansas. Sooners with two timeouts remaining. And a huge hit by Kenneth Murray. Walloped Puka Williams. Another timeout taken here by the Sooners. Well, they just run it again. And nowhere to go for Williams. Ran into his own guy. And they're going to give him forward progress to the two. But Kansas will take its final timeout. And the Jayhawks will have to punt from the very back of their end zone. Had some success. Neville Gallimore haven't had a chance to call his name very often today. He's their best defensive lineman, very disruptive. One of only a couple seniors. Good snap. And Thompson steps into it. Great punt. Driving C.D. Lamb back all the way to his 35. Taking it off of the Kansas Gunners to get down there. Lamb makes it a thunder miss. Into Jayhawk territory. A flag down. Lamb finally spun out of bounds around the 20. Here the return. Personal foul. Face mask. The kicking team. Wow. Half the difference for the goal. First down. Seventh penalty on Kansas. You can see that left hand up in the face mask. That's Williams over there, right, against. Sooners out of timeouts. Hurts to throw, and he swings it out to Lamb. The guy miss and scores. Touchdown, Sooners. Mike Lee whiffed on C.D. Lamb. And Lamb gets his seventh touchdown of the year. Well covered in the back end by Kansas. But that doesn't mean a whole lot when you're playing against this wide receiver core. They're so good in space. And C.D. Lamb shows you that wiggle. And makes him one of the best receivers in college football. So an absolute killer sequence for Kansas after they forced a punt on first and goal. No punt needed this time. One play. And it's a touchdown. And Oklahoma is in full command now late in the first half. Lamb has now got eight touchdowns, seven receiving, one rushing. And this will be a touchback. 31 seconds left for Kansas. Brown players' jersey that they're excited to watch on Monday night. What up, Beckham? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> There's uh, Puka Williams on the catch. Kansas does have a timeout. 
Tim Hill with the New Orleans Saints, a guy that can do a lot of different things for you and play quarterback for you as well. Carter Stanley airing it out and overthrowing his receiver by a mile. Tried it, Andrew Parchment, 19 seconds to go in the half. I think we're all really excited, though, to watch Jalen continue to grow. Don't forget, Baker Mayfield had a great understanding of this offense. He had a redshirt year after transferring from Texas Tech, so really got to learn the intricacies, had a great understanding, having run the offense at Texas Tech, that Lincoln was going to implement when he became the starter. And then Kyler Murray, of course, after transferring from Texas A&M, had time to really work on his craft when he wasn't thrust into a starting role. Jalen Hurts has been here for nine months and already has a good command, but that command is only going to strengthen, I would assume, over time. Lasseter tackled for a loss by Turner Yell, and that will be the final play of the first half. Kansas had the lead the first time Oklahoma had trailed this season. But Jalen Hurts took over with a touchdown pass and a touchdown run. The Sooners lead 21-7. When we come back, Kevin, Jonathan, and Mark will catch you up with everything on the State Farm halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations for the Jayhawks. And here is Brown from his 15-yard line. And good special teams game tackling. He averages 324 yards per game, which is 10th in the country. He's third in the country in completion percentage. Trey Sermon gets the call on first down. Like the first half, the Jayhawks do a pretty good job against the run on first and 10. Let's check him with Tom. Well, guys, in classic Les Miles fashion, I asked him, coming out of the tunnel, I said, self-inflicted wounds and penalties, right? And he says, oh, that's so true, man. And so we kind of had a chuckle about that, but he feels good about his team. He said his team's angry right now. They're very, very frustrated, and they're a football team that knows that if they maintain possession of the ball, they can stay in this game. Hurts off play action in trouble and gets rid of the pass. <laughs> Tried to hit Trey Sermon. You saw the helmet of Jeremiah Hall come off. Kamara had a hold of Hurts. Couldn't bring him down. And you'll see on the right side, Jeremiah Hall working against Kamara. Jalen just trying to get rid of it before he's brought down. That was a good rush by the defender. And this offensive line for Oklahoma has not been at their best today. They haven't run the ball with great efficiency, and even the protection hasn't been ideal for Jalen Hurts in the first 30 minutes. Only their fourth third down of the entire game. Hurts steps up and takes off, and Hurts has the first down and more. All the way past the 40-yard line. Just so good as a runner. 24 yards for Jalen Hurts. Well, he's going to see Kyron Johnson, number 15, depart in this zone defense, and he just sees so much room. If I can pick it up with my legs. Great run by Jalen Hurts. Hurts from the pocket and hits Basquin. Knocked down about a yard shy of the line to gain by Tornaden and McCullough. As that counteraction, Greg, where you really expose Jalen Hurts to pressure. You're leaving not one, but two unblocked defenders in the face of the quarterback. Credit him for being able to avoid and get the ball out. And adjust his arm angle, too. It's a good pickup on first down. On second and two, Hurts keeps it here, cuts it back, and has the first down again. Down to the 44-yard line. You know, it's interesting, the difference with Jalen Hurts and Kyler Murray last year is Kyler Murray did not like called run plays. Jalen Hurts is good with that all day. Right. And Kyler Murray didn't like contact. Remember those baseball slides that you saw so many times? Jalen Hurts wants to finish runs. And, and there's just, I think Kyler Murray is obviously more explosive with how quick he is and how it's so difficult to contain him. But Jalen, when that contact's there, he's lowering his shoulder. I mean, he expects to pick up the hard yardage for this offense when they need him to. Hurts 6'2", 220 pounds, going to hand it off here. And it's kind of running room for Sermon. Close to another Oklahoma first down. Oklahoma has Texas next week. Still have some tough road games at Kansas State, at Baylor. They have Iowa State at home. They're at Oklahoma State. 
We were talking with Les Miles yesterday about the Big 12 and Lincoln a little bit too in our call with him on Wednesday about how improved the Big 12 is. I mean, Les coached in the conference when he was at Oklahoma State, said it's so much better now, so much more competitive. On second and one, Hurt setting up, looking for the throwback, and nice catch by Hazelwood, the true freshman. Man, is he special. It was a beautiful throw. A great job by Hazelwood extending. Dalen worked all the way across the field that time. Started to his right, didn't like anything, and all the way back to find Hazelwood on the comeback. Nice throw and a good catch by the freshman, especially knowing where he was on the field to get both feet in bounds. He is a beast, boys. Uh, former number one overall receiver in last year's class. He, he is special. He's got a bright, bright future. Originally committed to Georgia, but he was a lifelong Oklahoma fan. Now some movement here by the Sooners. And the, it's a false start. I mean, what, what's taking the officials so long? This has been a theme throughout. False start. Multiple players. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. I mentioned that uh, Jaden Hazelwood grew up an Oklahoma fan. His dad went to Oklahoma. One done on the top left is my favorite. The top, right? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <laughs> looks like signing day, doesn't it? I mean, So much speed, and Justin Fields is playing elite football. And I'll tell you what, don't discredit what Ohio State's doing on defense, too. Chase Young is an absolute beast coming off the edge. Last was in the 2008 Orange Bowl against Virginia Tech. Last win at home against just a ranked team was back in 2010 when they beat Georgia Tech. Carter Stanley gets leveled. His pass is incomplete. It's intended for Charlotte. Kenneth Murray with the hit on the quarterback. You have to think that Oklahoma got a little bit of an earful 
from their coordinator, Alex Grinch, giving up quite a few yards on the ground, and you see the contact there at the top of your screen. Pretty fortunate there that Oklahoma didn't get called for a pass interference, but Alex Grinch done a great job with this defense throughout the course of the first month of the season. They've given up a awful lot of yards on the ground today against Puka Williams and these Jayhawks. Yeah, that was Trey Brown that was both holding and interfering. Stanley's pass high intended for Robinson, so now it's third down and ten. And one of the things that was working so well for Kansas in the first half, running the football, it's kind of hard to do now, trailing by three scores. Now off schedule completely, but on third and ten, they've actually had success running the football a couple times. Depending on what you look, what look you get from the defense, you might have numbers and an opportunity to get it to Puka Williams. But given what we've seen in these first and second down plays, you have to think Oklahoma is going to be a lot more aggressive on the defensive side and play a little more man coverage here in the second half. They'll throw it on third and ten. Stanley steps up, and he's going to keep it. And he gets hammered. Murray in there again for Oklahoma to force a punt. I thought he had an opportunity to work Puka Williams right here. You're going to see Puka run out, run a little bit of an out route, but there's there's some space if he sits it down. You need to see that coverage out in front of you. Don't run to get covered. Sit it down. And if Stanley finds Puka Williams, he could have maybe spun inside, found some yards after catch, and potentially found the the conversion. Kyle Thompson kicking it deep to C.D. Lamb. And Lamb will scoop it up. Penalty marker is down, and there goes Lamb. Past the 30. Making a house call. A punt return for a touchdown. Again, a penalty marker is down at midfield. 73-yard punt return for a score off one hop. Kickoff. That has not stopped Jalen Hurts from working his magic. He's got 20 combined touchdowns now in the season. Three today. He'll throw here on first and ten with a big lead. And then he'll take off with everybody covered. And he gets another first down. And scoots out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Time now for today's Affleck trivia question. Lincoln Riley is one of three FBS head coaches since 2000 to win 24 games in his first two seasons. Can you name the other two? Oh, <laughs> I think I can name one of them. I will right, well, hold on here after this play. Hurts on the rollout, throws a deep ball, going for Hazelwood, but off the mark. All right, Lukes, what do you got? Is Chris Peterson one of them? He is not. I think I have one. Really? Mark Helfrich at Oregon. That is correct. That's one. That's one. I don't have the other one. Right. The, the <laughs> other one happened much in, he said, since 2000? Since 2000. Yeah, okay. so it, was, it, was, it was around that time. Oh, it's, it's Bob Stoops. No, no. Oh. His first, his first couple it's years 90. were in the 90s. Yeah, I know. That's right, yep. I'll give you I'm a hint. I, give think, you a hint. I think I have an idea. Oh, you do? Well, go ahead. I think it involves an NFL, a guy that left for an NFL job. And I'm going to say Larry oh. Coker at Miami. I'm not going to tell you whether you're right. <laughs> Hurts on second and ten, escapes pressure, and has an open receiver, Jeremiah Hall, first down. So Butch Jones got the Cleveland Browns job. Butch Davis. Butch or Davis. Butch Davis. <laughs> Butch Jones. Butch Davis. Butch Davis got the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> You're never letting that, that be, one down. That would be news, oh, wouldn't yeah, it? Oh, that is the Browns news. Yeah, Butch Davis <laughs> got the Browns job. And remember, Greg Schiano was the defensive coordinator, and he left he, he, for Rutgers. Yeah. Remember, he was considered the heir apparent there in Miami. Larry Coker got the job, and obviously Mark Helfrich with the job he did at Oregon, getting him to a national championship game. Here's Stevenson, breaking tackles and still going inside the 30. Finally pushed out the junior college transfer at 6 feet, 236 pounds, runs for 36 yards. And that was a nice run, too. Nothing there initially. That wrapping up, too, by the Kansas defense. I'll tell you what, Stevenson is a load. 
low to the ground. Certainly going to be kind of that short yardage back. And you think about the power that you have to account for with Jalen Hurts and Stevenson in the ball game. That's a lot. It's a nice three-headed monster at running back for these Sooners. Hurts keeping it. A beautiful move there just to shake the defender. He did lose yardage, though, stepping out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Greg, I think you're going to start to see Oklahoma, and, and particularly this drive, Kansas has decided to play four or five in the box and drop eight, and that's why you've seen some of these big runs from Jalen, but they've got to start getting this run game going. Get this offensive line into rhythm. Use this game as an opportunity to, to get ready for next week because you're going to need this group up front against Texas. Yeah, and I think that's the one group so far on this Oklahoma defense. I think you can make a case that everyone's improved. I mean, obviously the quarterback is it's tough to say that he's improved off of what Kyler Murray did last year, but he's done a terrific job through the first month of the season. But the one position group that I still would like to see a little bit more out of is the offensive line for Oklahoma. They've had some injuries, they've had some adversities, but that's the one group that really needs to come together here over the next six or seven weeks for Oklahoma to do some of the things they want to do in the playoff and beyond. Their, their last regular season loss was against Texas October 6th last year. They've won 10 straight since. Of course, they lost in the college football playoff last year to Alabama. Third and seven. Hurts to the end zone. Pitch and catch. Sermon. Touchdown. No Jayhawk within a mile. The route is on. It is now 34 to 7. Second touchdown pass for Hertz. Fourth accounted for today. 21st touchdown accounted for this year. Yeah, and you're going to see Calcaterra run a little post. And they're going to run the wheel right around it. And nobody accounts for Trey Sermon coming out of the backfield. They ran that play earlier trying to hit Jeremiah Hall. They got called with a pass interference. That time completely uncovered. And Jalen finds the outstanding running back. Feels like a month ago that it was 7-0 Kansas. All Jalen Hurts since. Almost threw a pick six. That uh, would have given Kansas a 14-7 lead, but it was dropped. Good return here by Jamal Horn, but he's brought down at the 28-yard line. Let's honor those who serve. Brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. Today we honor Kansas Red Shirt Junior Donovan Franklin. The Jayhawks running back attended Army his first two years before transferring to Lawrence. Played football for the Black Knights. Ironically, Franklin is from Maryland, so he almost went to Annapolis. But ended up at Army and now here at Kent, Kansas. The junior, 5'9", 182 pounds. Thank you, Donovan, for your service. See if Kansas just gets back to running the ball here with a 28-point deficit. And on first down, they get good yardage, about three or four. That's been working. Their first down run play has been pretty good against Oklahoma's defense. Puka Williams on the day has 100 rushing yards. Well, it's the only thing that gives them a chance, Greg, is, is you've got to get ahead of the chains if you want to give yourself an opportunity to have a better play selection on second and third down. Yeah, because the coverage in the back end from Oklahoma, especially here in the second half, has been a lot more contested than what we saw at times in the first half. There's Williams again, bottled up after a pickup of three more. But look, they, they have a rising star at defensive coordinator. Remember last year they made the move to fire Mike Stoops during the season. Alex Grinch, who was at Ohio State last year and previously at Washington State. A, a guy that is very respected throughout college football. And I think the big thing is he has preached to the players, we don't want to be good just for Oklahoma. I mean, we don't want to hold them under 40 and then we'll win. And no, it, we want to be sound, we want to be good, we want to be relentless. And if you look at this defense, it, they are so improved from where they were last year in regards to effort, angles, guys flying to the football and playing good team-oriented defense. Back shoulder throw, and good job by Charlotte. Charlotte 
I don't know that he saw the ball. Caught him by surprise. <laughs> Look what I got. 12 yards. Yeah, that was what you call anticipating the throw. I mean, my goodness, he turns around a little push off there. And that's what Parnell Motley was, was wanting, a little offensive pass interference. That was a nice throw and catch. Good anticipation from the quarterback, Carter Stanley. So not gaudy numbers for Stanley, but he also hasn't turned it over in the game. And here Stanley just keeps it and a gain of two. And knowing the offenses you're going to play in the Big 12, it's hard to rank up there in the top of college football. But where you can be efficient is on third downs. That's the biggest key in the Big 12 because these offenses, the way they're engineered, they're going to generate a lot of yardage. It's just to be expected. But if you can get off the field and be really good in the red zone, holding teams just to field goals as opposed to touchdowns, that's a huge step. So I have been so impressed with what Oklahoma has done on the defense side of the football. The coverage has been better, they've been more physical, and they've been able to rush the passer with a little more consistency this year as opposed to where they were last year. And there goes Perka Williams again. Man, he is tough to get to the ground. you got to catch him first. It's a gain of 17. Puka Williams, you see how fast he is. I mean, beating up front doesn't matter. He sits there and you think Deshaun White has a nice angle. He's there, he's fitting in the hole. And Puka Williams just runs right around him. And that is top tier speed. He is their most consistent playmaker. And as Kansas continues to grow and evolve and figure out what they want to be offensively, you have to think Puka Williams is going to be front and center in all their game plans. Especially now with Khalil Herbert leaving the team. Puka Williams is the guy. Now going up high to make that hit was Turner Yell. And After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number two, Kansas. Also unsportsmanlike, number four, Oklahoma. The penalties offset. The down counts, second down. So that's that is Charlotte. both players' first unsportsmanlike foul of yep. the game. Second one you rejected, so Davis and Charlotte. Wow, punches being thrown there. Got to be careful. Play action for Stanley, and he's mauled by Asamoah. Here's Cassidy. Three minutes to go in the first half, but all Oklahoma since. Stanley, incomplete. There are a couple of offensive linemen that were like 15 yards downfield. There are a couple of offensive linemen that were like 15 yards downfield, and a flag was thrown. Not sure if that is what the penalty is for. It was thrown right at their feet. There's also a flag on the far side of the field in front of the Oklahoma sideline. They're definitely going to get linemen downfield. The lineman thought it was a screen. Quarterback thought it was a pass. Eligible receivers downfield, number 61 and 58. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Just get the sense, even today, with that first half and how they played against West Virginia, the win over Boston College, that Kansas is much better than it's been in previous years. Fair catch by Lamb. 35-7 OU. 16. First down for Jalen Hurts and company. They're going to keep it on the ground with Stevenson, and he pushes forward to the 20-yard line. We mentioned Texas is up next. They often also have to go to Kansas State at Baylor. Bedlam is in Stillwater. TCU's playing better. Iowa State at home. We'll see what West Virginia does against Texas today in Morgantown. Hurts on the rollout. Gets rid of the pass as he was being dragged down by Johnson, so it's third down. I think we're still going to find out more about Oklahoma. Hey, you can't control what the teams that you line up against are. I mean, you just have to play who's scheduled, and frankly, Houston's not what we thought they might be. Obviously, UCLA is still in complete real rebuild mode. Kansas is the team that is still struggling. Texas Tech looks better today, so maybe that win will get better as the season goes along, but... There's no denying that their toughest test is certainly next week against the Texas Longhorns, a team that has been battle-tested against LSU, but still a lot to find out about Oklahoma as they move forward. Hurts on third and six. 
And it's a first down catch by Rambo. You know, Greg, and, and I think that's fair. You know, we, we've seen, you know, how LSU's looked. We, we see, you know, Clemson struggle, and obviously Alabama and Ohio State's been ripping it. But the schedule for, for Oklahoma to this point, I want to see Oklahoma truly challenged. And right. we talk about Texas, but really after Texas, um, are we going to see enough of that? Because to this point, when you watch this team on offense, you watch them on tape, it's it's been easy. I mean, let's call it what it is. And I, I think, too, though, uh, who has Ohio State played at this point? Who, who has Alabama played at this point? I think that you can make that case for a lot of teams. There's Sermon out in space. Brought down at the 35. But then again, you also know that Oklahoma, like Alabama, like Ohio State, you know they can score points. Right. You know that. It's just how much better are they on defense? I happen to think, Tom, they're a heck of a lot better, and that's going to benefit them an awful lot when they play against top-tier teams in the Big 12 and yep. when they tee it up potentially in a college football playoff scenario. Mm -hmm. We'll have some time to revisit this in the fourth quarter with Oklahoma in command, 35-7 over Kansas, behind another outstanding performance by Jalen Hurts. Back after this message and a word from our ABC station. Oh, my gosh, that movie. <laughs> Oklahoma on second and five. They're still throwing the ball down the field. Here's Sermon. An acrobatic attempt by Sermon. And it's picked off instead by Stevens McKenzie. Well, they had cameras everywhere yesterday, even in our production meeting when we met with Coach Miles. Here's Puka Williams. And he's across the 35, picking up two or three yards. Look, it's been done before. Kansas, it wasn't that long ago. It was 2007. They went 12-1, and one, and then in 2008, 8-5. What will it take as Puka Williams gets the call again here? Comes up just short of the first down. What will it take for Les Miles to win here? Well, I think, first of all, is full support of the administration. And I, and I think he has that. Jeff Long, the football guy, the new athletic director, they're committed to trying to win on the football field, which is huge. So they've checked that box. And I think, too, expanding that recruiting footprint. And Les Miles' name, when that name is on the other end of the line, People are going to listen to that. Recruits are going to listen to that. Whereas it might not have always been the case in the last decade with some of the coaches that have been here. Good job there against that Oklahoma front getting the uh, first down on the ground with Puka Williams. You, you know what, Greg, too, and you talk about that, that footprint, that recruiting footprint, it has to start at the high school level. The state of Kansas very strong in their junior college programs, but there is no quick fix here. And this is something that has to have a foundation of four- and five-year guys. Because that's the one thing you do have here if you're Les Miles. You can recruit players and redshirt them and develop them and have them in your program for a long time. Felton Gardner, true freshman, is in the game at running back. He'll get the call here. Spins away from one man, but then pushed back by Asamoah. Uh, and, and you look at where this program is trending. They're ranked 35 right now. I mean, that's I think that's commendable. And, and listen, when you get your first full recruiting cycle in as a coaching staff and you're not playing, you know, behind the sticks because you've got a late start, that's when you really start to see uh, a shift. And, and listen, the whole ESPN Plus Miles to Go series, I mean, you're telling me that's not an unbelievable recruiting tool to give insights to players on what your program is all about? No question they're going to be able to use that to their advantage. Got a penalty marker down some movement here. Plus, you know, less hired a good staff. Less Kenny's been around. Offense, number four, five-yard penalty, still second down. And it's not easy to hire the staff as well to find assistant coaches who will come to a place that hasn't won and Les Kenning, offensive coordinator, and then D.J. Elliott, the defensive coordinator, who's got a lot of experience. I think one other thing, too, is they have to create a sense of pride within their own locker room by making sure that what few guys come out of the state of Kansas that can play Division I football in the Power Five, you have to get those guys. You yep. can't have those guys leave and go to Notre Dame or, or some of the other big programs that like to recruit the Midwest. You have to keep those guys at home. Long throw by Stanley is caught by Parchman. It'll be third and short. You're right, Greg, and, and the way to do that is to show sustained improvement and each and every week, you know, going into the following season, you got to get the kids a reason to want to stay and that goes
goes back to the initial comment you made, the university investment. You've got to show prospects that the university wants football to be good, that they're going to invest in the sport of football. And once they get that message and then you see the proof is in the pudding, whether it's renderings of stadium enhancements or whatever it may be, that's going to pay some dividends as well. They've had success on third down and short with Puka Williams. So this time he's tackled near the line of scrimmage by Gallimore, fourth down. you got to think Kansas is definitely going to keep their offense on the field. But I do think the first few games, there was a lot of progress made. I mean, and that's the big thing. I'm not going to evaluate Kansas by what their record is at season's end. I'm going to evaluate them based on how much progress they made from the year before. And if I'm going to look at the first few games, they're a lot better football team than what we saw at times last year. Stanley to throw on fourth down and overthrew the intended receiver, Louavasa. Oklahoma will take over on downs, leading Kansas 35-7. When Les was on the coaching staff and Jeff was in the athletic department. Here's Stevenson with a big hole. Got the first down. Breaks a tackle. Look out. Can they catch him? They will not. Stevenson with a 61-yard touchdown run. Just a little split zone right up the middle. And you see the big 235 pound back showing off how nimble he is as well with a little cut and the breakaway speed to the outside. Stevenson, not the fastest of the bunch, but showing off some of that juice in the open field. It's a nice, powerful run by the junior college transfer. And that's 20 quarters played this year. and. A touchdown in each one of them for Oklahoma. 42 to 7 Sooners. The Tigers look like a national title contender so far. We'll see how good Florida is. Here's Horn on the return, and he gets smashed at the 25. I like this league though from top to bottom. Teams three through six are 10 times better than they were just a few years ago. Stanley back to throw, going downfield here and almost intercepted. Motley couldn't hang on. Taking a deep shot to Parchment. There is a penalty flag down in the backfield. Defended by the number eight. I think, Greg, all these teams are so dang similar. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 38, 15 yard penalty and an automatic. First down. You so know, they, Brian Mead. They all have such good athletes and they're all difficult to defend in space. I mean, there's just the margin of error is so slim in this conference. Well, I think it's clear that, that Oklahoma is one at this point. Yeah. Texas is probably two, even though I have my concerns about them defensively. And then you look at teams three through six between Baylor and Kansas State yeah. and Oklahoma State, and obviously what uh what we've seen from Iowa State at, at times. I mean that that group, that collection of teams have really improved. And then TCU is a team that clearly can put their best foot forward as evidenced by their performance last week against Kansas. Here's a first down catch by Parchment. Good throw by Carter Stanley. I think the depth of the league has really improved. And I think the SEC and the, and the Big Ten are the two best leagues in college football. But I would say that the Big 12 as a whole is closer to those two than they are to the Pac-12 and the ACC, both of which who I think pretty big gap between those two and the aforementioned three. Stanley again throwing downfield. This should be picked off, and it is. Justin Broyles returning it for Oklahoma. There is a flag down. Broyles upended. Out of bounds by the quarterback, Carter Stanley. We'll see what the penalty mark is about. And there's actually a second flag down. Way Part too much. Part of the much. pass, holding defense, number 25, 10-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. There was no foul for a block below the waist. After discussion, the contact was legal. Again, they play Texas next week.
Longhorns on ABC facing West Virginia Stanley to the air again taking another shot and that one is on the money for a touchdown to Stefan Rock. An extra point makes it 42 to 14 Oklahoma. Something I know their head coach is preaching day in day out. To be a touchback and the Sooners will start on their 25 yard line. Quarterback uniform the last couple years, but good enough runner. So I just want to see him operate efficiently. Get the ball out of your hands quickly and and play within an offense that should allow you to excel. Through a pass there to Drake Stoops. Bob's son. Oklahoma crowd liked it. Drake, a redshirt freshman. That's his third catch of the season. That's the biggest thing you want to see from your quarterback is you don't want to see any drop off. Yeah, you might not have the playmaking ability, but the way you operate as a backup, you're constantly being evaluated. And Mordecai, some valuable reps, knowing that they're going to have a huge quarterback competition next year to replace the departed Jalen Hurts. Marcus Major wrestled to the ground by Darius Moraney, but a flag is down. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 97, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, and an automatic first down. And you see that pretty clear. Moraney just put that left arm up into the face mask of the, of the running back. No place for that. Got to be careful, obviously. A good call by the official. Mordecai keeps it and loses yardage. We are talking about the seamless transition from quarterbacks. How about, you know, Joe Castiglione, the outstanding athletic director at Oklahoma, the seamless transition. I mean, nobody wants to be the guy that follows the guy. Talking about Bob Stoops, but I mean, you just don't see it very often where the next guy steps in and has as much success, if not more. And, and Bob Stoops knew Lincoln Riley was an up and comer. Right. He was at East Carolina as the offensive coordinator. His roots at Texas Tech, so he hired him to be the OC. As uh, Mordecai shows off his running ability. Mordecai's pass. Sliding catch made by Trajan Bridges. And Lincoln's only 36. That, that's a thing. I mean, I mean, sure he could say at Oklahoma forever, but. Yeah, I say 30 there. years. It might be 40 yeah, or 50. Right. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I mean, really. We're selling him short. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. I, I remember vividly. I was on a visit to Texas Tech. And Lincoln Riley picked me up, and at that point, he was so low on the totem pole because I wasn't a five-star. I was a three-star. So think about how low on the totem pole you have to be to pick up the three-star recruit <laughs> at Lubbock <laughs> Airport. But, it, I mean, it's just amazing when I talked to him in that short drive, you knew that this guy had such an intense focus, and he was still a senior in college at the time. You just knew he had a bright future. I don't think any of us would have envisioned it being this bright this early in his career as a coach, but, man, he is obviously – at the controls of what looks like a machine here at Oklahoma for quite some time. Greg, you referenced the, you know, his destination for quarterbacks. And I think it also speaks volumes that when you have a guy like Jalen Hurts transfer in, Tanner Mordecai didn't leave. Yeah. He stuck around. Now, I understand that Austin Kelly had, you know, limited uh, eligibility left, but Tanner Mordecai was set up to be the guy. And he's still here. I think that tells you an awful lot. Major. Breaking tackles and getting the first down. Of course, don't forget Spencer Rattler. Oh, yeah. Lugs, who I know you are very excited about as the ESPN director of recruiting. When Mordecai and Rattler go at it, what kind of competition are we expected to see in the spring? You're going to see two live arms. Um, neither are going to be the athlete that, that Baker and, 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 and Kyler and, and certainly Jalen have been. So I think the offense has a slight shift, but you might be uh, better off in terms of having pure passing skill sets with those two than you currently have with Jalen. Marcus Major again on the carry, stacked up at the 15. You have to wonder, too, we talk about quarterback play. 
for Oklahoma. We, we know that those guys were elite, but you could make a pretty clear argument that Oklahoma had the best offensive line in college football last year. Yep. Not only is it a destination for quarterbacks, but it's a destination for all offensive personnel. The one thing in talking to Lincoln that he really needs to emphasize are continuing to find big bodies along the defensive line. That's the one area they have Gallimore, and he's excellent, but he's going to be gone this year. They need to fortify those numbers with youth and talent, and that's the one area that you want to see them continue to excel at in recruiting. You know what, too, Greg, is, and, and that's not exclusive to Oklahoma. It's a, it's a conference problem for whatever reason, and the Pac-12 experienced it, too. Uh, there's just not the big bodies in, a, in, in, in big numbers to spread around the league. So if you can get your hands on a couple of them, it can mean uh, the, the difference between being a conference champion contender and being in the middle of the pack just because of that one position. Yeah, and think about the offenses you can neutralize. If you find some difference makers, for instance, like Clemson had last year, you find some difference makers up front along the defensive line, think about how many offenses you can stymie in the Big 12 and, and throughout college football. Mordecai to the end zone and broken up. Incomplete. Good play by Elmore Hempstead. The intended for number 10. Theo Weiss was the intended receiver. So fourth down, and they're going to bring on the kicker, Gabe Burkich. Fourth and six at the 15. And in formation for Oklahoma, number 46. So a 32-yard attempt was two for two. Long 34. And so he's three for three. Their ability to spread you and beat you through the air. Logan on the return for Kansas. Up to about the 29. All right, let's look at six through 10. I like Kyle Trask. That's, that's why it's, I know that you know Florida lost his starting quarterback in Felipe Franks due to injury. That pass is off target. I like Trask, and you still have a, a, a true freshman quarterback. You know, for for Auburn, Bo Nix. So it, it's not a, a slam dunk that no Auburn wins that game today. It's, you guys don't like Florida that much. Well, it's not, but Auburn's defense can just suffocate you. And to to Bo Nix's credit, you could make an argument of all the true freshman quarterbacks that are playing right now. He's made the most in, incremental improvement weekend and week out from week one to week five. Stanley to throw again, and it's caught for a first down. That's parchment on the grab. Is there a team not listed by any of us? So outside the top ten, that I mean, we've got a long way to go in the season, and it's usually you know when, when the when the first college football playoff rankings come out, there's usually someone that's around between 12 and 17 that ends up being in the top five or six at the end of the year. Is there is there anybody outside the top ten? I think Washington. Uh, that's the team that I would say. Another nice one. Yeah. Stanley on target to Robinson again. He's he really likes that deep ball to Robinson. Robinson doing a great job runner, running underneath it. Really nicely done. Nice win initially at the line of scrimmage. He puts on the Jets. A perfectly thrown ball in stride from Stanley. But I'm telling you, when he gets when he gets hot, Stanley. It's one of those guys that he can really execute all the throws. He just it's a little bit up and down from time to time. In trouble here, and down he goes, getting sacked by Pat Fields. So you said Washington right now at the top and in the middle of the Big 12. It's just those teams, depending on what you get, it's going to be really tough to beat. Stanley keeping the play alive here. Finds an open receiver. It's Robinson. Touchdown, Jayhawks. Extra point, no good. Hooked. The injuries they've had as well. Comes the onside kick. And recovered by Oklahoma. This will be 22 consecutive true road games, the second longest ever. Here's Pledger on the run for the Sooners. The record is 25 in a row by Oklahoma, actually. 1953 to 1958. Next week is not a true road game, so at 
K-State be the next opportunity to get the 23rd consecutive true road win. That's pretty remarkable when you think about it. I mean, to think that it's been that long since they've lost a true road game is pretty amazing. Going to give it to Pledger again here. And he's down to the 31 yard line. And a little extracurricular activity, which has been a storyline for these two teams the last few years. I know it's weird too, guys. It's like, why? You know, yeah, where did I mean, that come where's from? the bad blood? Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it either. Well, I understand more today because of what happened over the last couple of years, but why initially the, yeah. the bad blood? I just, it's not like there's a history between these two programs. Mordecai hands it off again here on second down and three. Good job by Kansas defensively, so to bring up third down. Ball number 81, Willis. I mean, this is where, at least from our recollection, it, it started, right, with, with Baker going at it with the Kansas sideline a couple years ago following the Kansas uh, captains would not shake his hand at midfield. Not sure why you'd poke the bear, either, if you're the Jayhawks, going back to that a couple years ago. And then we saw, you know, Kenneth Murray coming on the field today, colliding with a, a Kansas player intentionally, and then the Kansas player trying to trip him. And they get the first down here, and we'll see if they just uh, take a knee. Kansas isn't going to use its timeouts anymore. Bridges with the catch. It's going to be fun to watch this Oklahoma team continue to grow. I'm just, I'm so optimistic. I really am. I'm so optimistic about their growth on the defensive side. There's a lot of reason to feel good about that side of the football and the improvements they've made. You know they're going to continue to be great on offense. I just, just really excited to see where this team goes from here. And Pledger was tackled inbounds, so the clock is running, and that will do it. The Oklahoma Sooners were down in this game, 7-0, and it was 14-7 with just a couple minutes left in the first half. Kansas made some mistakes, a drop on fourth down, a dropped interception that was definitely going to go the other way for a touchdown. But you knew at some point there's just too much power on this offense led by Jalen Hurts who accounted for four touchdowns as the Sooners win it 45-20 over Kansas. Coming up next, college football scoreboard for Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville. I'm Dave Pash saying so long from Lawrence, Kansas. 45-20, Oklahoma beats Kansas for its 15th consecutive win against the Jayhawks. Now let's send you to Monroe, Louisiana.